Thank you very much. It's, it's a great privilege to be with you, a great privilege to be the, the last speaker, and a great privilege to be the only European speaking about all these issues. And I would be very happy to share with you some personal thoughts about the lessons we can draw from the last um, Congress of the Chinese Communist Party. Because coming from a European point of view, it's very interesting to see how the Chinese authorities, as you were describing, the Chinese authorities gave a sort of framework um, about what they want for China for these next three decades. Two objectives. The first one is to say China is going to be the first power in the world within 2050. And second, we are going to bring you to a framework of what can be the strategic relations with the non-American world. And this is very interesting because the Chinese authorities and the President Xi Jinping gave for that a very brilliant ID, which is this famous Silk Road. We like the word in, in French, uh, one belt, one route. It's, it's very, very scale. It's a sort of new Marshall Plan for the 21st century. And I think we, all of us, should make a great focus on this project. Because when you have a look to it, it's unstoppable. First of all, because there is one criterion that makes sure that this is going to be successful. It's a total alignment of interests between all the shareholders. And I was listening to what Mr. Cooper was saying about the difficulties that uh, the American policy has to be on the table because of what happened since one year. According to me, there is a very interesting contrast between what's going on in the United States and the fact at the same time the Chinese authority, authorities are bringing on the table a real new deal for all of us. I say for all of us because when you have a look to uh, the, the layout of this project, it includes China, of course, but also the other Asian countries, which are very happy to be included in something we bring that would bring growth, economic growth and development. It includes the Arab countries, who have the opportunities to diversify their own oil supplies and their investment for the funds, and of course Europe, which is at the same time launching very important structural reforms in Germany, Spain, Italy, Northern Europe, and France since uh, six months. So we can imagine that there is a real, very interesting New Deal for all of us. And what is very original, and it's a con in contrast with the old Silk Road of the year, 2,000-year-old sea road. There is also, and this is very interesting, a seaway coming from the Chinese ports, then Indonesia, Singapore, um, the Suez Canal, after the Red Sea, the Suez Canal, the Mediterranean Sea, and the two roads <coughs> are going through Venice, which is, as everybody knows here, the city of lovers. And uh, it's a, a way for us to remember that inside of this plan, there is trade, economic development, and growth. And there is also a very important cultural dimension that brings all of us three billion citizens inside of this uh, perimeter that are now driven to say we can share culture, education, science, technology. I mean, it's a real new deal for all of us. And coming from a Chinese point of view, I can imagine this is, of course, very interesting. But it's very interesting as well for a European point of view. We are now looking how to be more useful. As you know, in Europe, we have some problems to have a common defense policy, to have a, dip a, a diplomatic policy which can be uh, accessible for everybody. We have the opportunity to do it now because, again, the alignment of interest against terrorism, against drug traffics, against um, 
the way we have to bring peace or stability in many areas in the world. North Korea, of course, but also in the Middle East. Brings us to work all together. And there is no better way to, br to work all together than with economy and trade. But of course, there is always a downside. We have also to uh, put on the table the hurdles we have to tackle, the impediments. Many of them, we have them in, in mind, of course. Just three examples. First, the overheat of the Chinese economy, which is not a small problem. It's a major problem for all of us when a country like China reach, reaches something like 250% of debt out of the GDP. It's a global problem. It's not only a Chinese problem. The second impediment is the question of environment. We know that everybody, I mean in China, in Asia globally, in Europe, we really want to see how we can be more efficient to preserve a sustainable development. And of course, I, like everybody, regret the position of the President Trump. But as a matter of fact, what's going on in China today is worrying for all of us on environmental questions. And I think we have to keep that in mind. And the third impediment, which is probably the most difficult, is the question of protectionism. In my opinion, we cannot imagine the success of this project of Silk Road if we, are, do not, we, if we don't keep in mind the question of reciprocity. We have to take that into account. If the trade is not fair between China and Europe, we will not be able to be successful. We have lots of incidents between us. The question of ports, of companies uh, that are not take, taken over because diplomatic problems, the question of s solar panels, even that. I really think that the question of reciprocity and trade rules are today the main priority. And then I will conclude just in one word about one thing which is according to me, very important. This project, this project is a great ambition for all of us. But it's also a way for us to put on the table three drivers, which are three drivers very important for all of us. The first one is education and culture. We do have a fantastic opportunity to know more about each other. Personally, I advocate for develop in France the teaching of Chinese language, to see how our children for the next generation will be able to know more about this culture, which is now, and we have to be prepared to it when we are European citizens, will be <coughs> the first country in the world within, two, within three decades. The second driver is technology, artificial intelligence, blo um, uh, blockchain, big data, we are all concerned. We have many things to, chairs, to chair. We all know that on all these questions, we have engineers, scientists, and of course, even if we are a bit late in Europe, we are now very determined in the way we can improve and spend much more uh, credits on public research and private research in order to be on the good level and the good scale on this question. And the third one, last one, is the diplomacy. As I told you previously, we have common interest because we have common enemies. And I think that a good diplomacy is a diplomacy where you could put in the table common values, but also common interest. Our cultural models are very far on many questions. So we won't be able to solve all the questions. There are too many differences, human rights, Tibet, Taiwan, we know all about that. But there are common interests. Again, what's going on with terrorists, with drug trafficking, with all the questions we have to tackle, we have common interests. And this can bring us to a new diplomacy. So I think that the European Union today is ready, provided its own capacity to continue and intensify the structural reforms, to be on the good level, to be one of the major partner for China and Asia. So this is a great opportunity and waiting for our American friends 
to be on the top on this question as well, after many, maybe waiting some years, we have the time to do it on our own terms. Thank you.